All right, so these are the three situations that you have to now consider. The first one, I call it the basic because it's basically what we're used to. We did it last week. And this is when you have, you know, a random variable and they're continuous random variables, which are normally distributed, right? Where the mean is whatever and the standard deviation is whatever. Remember last week you had to input this, it asked you what the distribution was. This is a big key. This is a big part of um, this is a big part of how you determine which distribution you're dealing with, if that makes sense. Um, I'm going to color coordinate, right? <clears throat> so my second situation is when we select now a sample and we talk about the sample's average or mean. It's going to be my green, my lime green, which is a lovely color. So this is the second situation when you have the distribution of the means, the distribution of the means. Also, obviously, average is another word we can talk about. The distribution of the mean. So instead of x, which is a random variable, we have x bar, which is a mean, right? So this is the mean of a sample. So you're selecting a sample size n, and you're taking the average of each of those samples. So this is the distribution of the means, which is normally distributed. Now, um, the notation varies a little bit slightly. It's not a big deal. It's still a mean, but it's a mean of the, or it's the population mean of the means, if that makes sense. This is the population mean of the averages. We're talking about the distribution of the means of the samples. Now the standard deviation, uh, maybe I'll use, I'll use both. I'll use both. So this is the standard deviation of the mean. Now, I normally don't write that only because the gist is the fact that now you have like a standard error, which we have to consider. So the population mean of the averages overall will basically be the same as the mean of the population, which I'm going to use this. And then the standard deviation is going to vary. It's going to become sigma over the square root of n. Now, I know the terminology is like weird or whatever, but at the end of the day, it's it's not difficult. It's repetitive from what you've done before. It's just a matter of determining which distribution you're from. And then it's this calculation here. <clears throat> but <clears throat> let me write this down. So now you can also have the distribution of the sums, right? Where you select samples of size n and calculate the sum of each sample where we approach, uh, approximate or approach a normal distribution type of situation. And if we have the mean, uh, the distribution of the sums, you're gonna see this notation, right? Summation of X. So stuff that can, you know, we saw before in terms of notation is coming back. <clears throat> so it is important to know what the notation is, what, it, you know, how to read it, you know, sample mean, sum of the X's, normally distributed, I'll use the notation first. This is the overall average of the sums. And this is the standard deviation of the sums of the distribution. Um, but <clears throat> the idea is that once we talk about the sums, when we talk about the overall, pop, uh, overall mean of the sums, we're going to take n times mu, and we're going to take <laughs> sigma times the square root of. So, the basic idea is the fact that, and you'll see, varying from last week, and this is kind of, I guess I'll use yellow, and this is dealing with the central limit theorem, which states that either the population is already normally distributed, or our sample sizes are at least 30, okay? And then we determine which distribution we're talking about. Once these are met, then we could say, well, am I selecting one? Is it the basic situation we did last time? Am I selecting a sample? And I'm talking about the mean of the sample, or am I talking about the sum of the sample? So, um, I wasn't prepared with the problem. I should have been. <clears throat> so, let me pull a problem from 
Probably for I'll take this one. And And I will do, we'll start with, we'll start with, hold on, I just took a problem from the thing, I don't know where it went. So this is from the first homework, and this is a calculation type of problem. The first bunch are true or false, but this, I can look at those in a second if you need to, but I want to talk about some calculations. So I don't know what number this is. This is number seven on the first homework. I guess ignore sometimes that copy and paste if it looks crazy. Ignore the numbers. Let's see what means. I'm going to just write that out because it doesn't look right. And it's, this is that. Okay. Then here we go again. Q1, Q2, you're going to do the IQR of this one. So a lot of this is going to seem familiar from last week, but the main idea is to basically understand which distribution you're from. So you guys are going to be asked what the distribution is. You're going to be asked um, to find probability. You're going to be asked to find a value corresponding to probability. Right? So you have to know when to use inverse norm or normal CDF again. So if you struggled with that last week, you're going to want to refer back last week. And you're going, to, you're going to want to um, make sure you understand that because you're doing it again this week, but we're adding something to it. We're adding an extra twist because now we're adding three types of distributions in total based on the central limit theorem instead of just that one situation. So let's start with, all right, well, let's read the problem, okay? Then again, if we need to read it multiple times, we will. The amount of pollutants that are found in waterways near large cities is normally distributed. With a mean of 9.5 ppm and a standard deviation of 1.8 ppm. So I'm already kind of norm normally distributed, which is kind of a good thing because the population is normally distributed. So this is already kind of solid. <clears throat> the mean of the population is 9.5 ppm, and the standard deviation of the population is 1.8. So they give me this. So I'm taking the words and converting it to my notation. So that's the population mean and the standard deviation from the population, which represents amount of pollutants that are found in waterways near large cities. That's my population. Now, check this out. 38 randomly selected large cities are studied. So I'm selecting a sample from the population. My sample size, this is lowercase n, don't confuse it with this one, is 38. So this is nice because at the end of the day, the sample size is also greater than or equal to 30. So I have some good stuff um, when it comes to the central limit theorem. My requirements are met. Um, the population is already normally distributed and the sample that I select is also greater than or equal to 38. So both of those little requirements are met. Uh, sorry, greater than or equal to 30. What is the distribution of X? Now, <clears throat> this question may not deal with all three cases, which is kind of what I want to do usually, but 
I'll do that after because that's the second homework assignment. Um, what is the distribution of X? So now X, X is the concept uh, that we dealt with last week where we're selecting one and we want to talk about the distribution of that one selected from the population, which is always normally distributed based on the mean and standard deviation that's given. So this is not any different, which I'll do it in pink, not any different from last week, 9.5 and 1.8. You know, typically when I do the stuff for this week, I, I, I try to like at least get this down first because at the end of the day, or at least all the distributions, at the end of the day, once you get into normal CDF or inverse norm, this is the part that you have to input at the end. I'll show you what I mean. Um, what color do I need to use? The, the next question, what is the distribution of, and I didn't, I deleted it because it looked crazy, X bar. So what does X bar mean? So now this is where understanding what the notation is saying or what the notation is, is important. What is the distribution of X bar? X bar represents means. So what is the distribution of X bar? Now we're talking about the means or the average of the samples. <clears throat> so, um, this is the notation for it, but this is the main idea. This is what we want. So the, the mean of the sample of averages, uh, of the averages of the samples is the same as the mean of the population. So <clears throat> the distribution of the means is normally distributed where the mean is the same as the population, so 9.5. <clears throat> the standard deviation, <clears throat> excuse me, of the means Converts is called a standard error. Converts because of the situation of changing, obviously, um, into this. So the standard deviation of the means is basically equal to the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. And this is this is the part that I said. This is like the formula you just need to know, or at least write down. And I'll say I'll say these. So I'm doing 1.8 divided by the square root of n divided by the square root of 38. Now this is not what you're going to input into the um, computer, you actually have to calculate that. But the mean is the same. The standard deviation, we'll do that on here, 1.8 divided by the square root of n, which square root of 38. I'm going to take a bunch of those. I'm going to go 0.29199. I think we want to round to four digits to the right of this. So if I am rounding, then I'm going to do 0 0.2. So if I take four, one, two, three, four, somebody asked me this, nine can't go up to 10 and I would round up because this is greater than um, or equal to five. So if this can't go up to 10, I go to the next number. So 2920 would be rounded to the nearest four digits, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. <clears throat> so this is my answer for the first situation. What is the distribution of the sample means? So this is why I said the main idea is here. You know, this is this is the part that you would calculate and input into the question when they ask you for the distribution of the means. Now there's no other distribution here. It didn't ask me for the distribution of the sums. I didn't see that. So I'm not talking about that yet. So it asked me for either the distribution of X or the C, uh, or the same or the means. Um, let me check Why did you take the square root of? I'm just trying to figure out. I can't really see your screen. It's super small. I'm trying to figure out why you got the square oh. root of 38. No. Oh. Okay. Here, let me change my. I wanted to make sure you can see that. So hold on. Let me change something real quick. That's not what I want. Hold on a second. Where did it go? I just lost. Oh, here. Hold on, I'm sharing the wrong screen. I want to focus in on what I'm writing because I want you to be able to see that. Window. This one. All right. So, can you see it better? Yes, that's better. Okay, now I see the 38. Okay, good. Yeah, so 
these are like the formulas that you need to know. Um, don't have to memorize them because obviously you could write them down. It's really just like the new part is this and then this. So it's whether, whether you're dealing with sampling one or if you're taking more than one when we're talking about the average of the samples or uh, I would say the um, average of each particular sample or the sums. So are we talking about the distribution of the means or are we talking about the distribution of the sums? That's where we're dealing with the central limit theorem. And if we are selecting more than one, then the population has to be normally distributed or the sample size that we select has to be greater than or equal to 30. Those are the minimum requirements. So the idea is, are you dealing with the basic distribution that you've dealt with before where you're selecting one, I kind of like focused on that last week, or are you selecting more than one where now, you know, let's say, let's assume the population wasn't normally distributed. I have to apply the central limit theorem so I can use normally distributed methods. I'm selecting a sample size. I want it to be either greater than or equal to 30. Population to be normally distributed or either one. If both are good, that's great. <clears throat> so am I talking about now that I'm selecting more than one, am I talking about a distribution of the means or am I talking about a distribution of the sums? Now, I didn't do this yet because that's the second homework assignment, but it's really just like it's a formula. So things are going to change a little bit because obviously we're selecting more than one. Now you're going to want to go and look up some central limit theorem stuff and get some good background on that. But when it comes to just calculations, right, the idea, the foundation of, of this, the central limit theorem and what you guys are doing is just which situation is it? Okay, which distribution, this is important, and this one, and this one, obviously, but this is what we've done before. And then based on that, basically everything repetitive from last week. Am I using normal CDF? Am I using inverse norm? That's the foundation, that's the basic idea when you're calculating stuff here. So um, it's, what, the reason that I did the square root of n is because it tells me this, this is a formula. It's the formula for the standard deviation of the distribution of the means. The is there a way to get that besides the square root though? Because I don't think we normally even use the square root here, right? I don't this, even know how to get that on my Calc 84. This is new. Oh, um, do you use the app or do you use the other Calc? Calc 84 app. Okay, so here's the app. Uh, let me change my screen again. Hold on, I'll be going back and forth so that you guys can see really, really clearly. Uh, so I have that also. Here's the Calc 84 app. You can see it? Yeah. So the square root button is on top of, you see here, x squared. Yep. The square root button's on top of that. So if I'm doing 1.8, 1.8, and then divided by, if I want to do square root of something, second, and then x squared. So I'll pull up x of uh, the square root symbol, and I want to do the square root of, what is it, 38. So I did 1.8 divided by the square root of, <laughs> which mine is converting into fraction form, but that's okay. The 9 fifths is the same as 1.8 divided by the square root of 38. And I want that in. So, okay. So if yours is doing this, which is probably good to show you, you have to change your mode. Yeah, I um, got it now. Thank you. You got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. I want it in decimal. So let me put it in decimal. Okay, so 0.29, blah, 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 blah. So, <clears throat> any other questions for now? Are we cool so far? All right, I'm going to be going back and forth between windows so that you guys can see it really clearly. All right, um, let's go back here. All right, now, here's my second question. So now I'm like, all right, um, I know my distribution of X. I know my distribution of the means. Let's see what questions I have here. And I'm going to color coordinate. Um, so when I read this, how do I determine which distribution I'm on? What is the probability that one randomly selected uh, city waterway will have more than 10.4 ppm pollutants? All right, so there's a couple things I have to convert, right? I have to convert into like what do I need in statistics? Well, first, let's say I'm selecting one. So that means that I'm using the basic distribution that I am, have used last 
last week, same thing. This is the same thing as last week. I'm selecting one, I'm using this distribution. Basically the first one. This is the key. Which distribution am I on, right? And that's it. If we're good with stuff last week, you're gonna be good with stuff this week. It's just now, all right, which distribution am I on first? Last week, we said probability was the same as what? If I want probability, that means that I want area. This is the same on a normal distribution curve. And you don't always have to draw this, but I draw it just the center of the curve is the mean of the distribution. I'm on the distribution of just X, right? Which is normally distributed with a mean of 9.5 standard deviation. I'm gonna probably write, write this for each question just to show you guys which distribution I'm on. But 9.5 is the center because the center of a normally distributed curve is always the mean, which is the same as the median and the mode. Um, and if I want probability, that means I want area under this curve. Well, a lot of times I like to know the center of the curve because, you know, when I talk about another value, like 10.4, I know that that's to the right of that, right? And I want area under the curve, and I want more than, so I want area to the right. <clears throat> Which is sloppy looking shade and median. So do you guys remember from last week, my calculator trick that I use if I want area? If I want area, one area. What is my calculator trick that I use? I'm not sure I have my chat up to me. Was that where you could just do one minus? Well, my well, um, yes, depending. But which one do I need? Do I need normal CDF or do I need inverse norm? It depends on which which of those I'm using. Okay. I can't remember. So, <laughs> okay, so this is important. <laughs> so when I want area, actually, I guess I'll write that in the notes too, okay? So refresh, if I want area, which is the same thing as probability or percentage, if you're asked for percentage, if you're asked for probability, that means you want area. It could be directly asked for area too, but then you use normal CDF. Normal CDF is area. That's going to give you area. Um, and then you bound it. Right, lower bound, upper bound, and then mean, and then standard deviation. And I'll show you on standard deviation. I ran out of space. I'll show you on both calculator things. Um, if I know area, which means I know percentage or probability, right? If I'm given a percentage or if I'm given a probability, um, so I, that means I know the area and the, <laughs> Hold on a second. When I move my hand, I will use If I know the area, or I know the percentage, or I know the probability, that means I want a value corresponding to that, which could be an X score, a, a Z score. It could be an X value, right? That's what we did last time. It could be a Z score if I'm, we're on the standard normal distribution curve, which we're not on this week. Um, or the value that corresponds to the situation, we use inverse norm. And this is where, depending on what you guys have, which calculator you have, you're always putting area. If you have the app, you're always putting area to the left, which is where you would do the one minus what you said if I'm doing inverse norm. And then you tell it the mean and the standard deviation. So these are the two situations. It's either this or this. Do I want area? Do I know area? Um, the only thing that's extra, that was last week, the only thing that's extra for this week is if, which, uh, which distribution are you on? Now, my instructor said you use for percentage or um, any time for percentage, it's inverse norm or percentile or quartile. It's inverse yeah, norm. Yeah, it, because in that situation, you're given percentage. You're given, you know it, right? If you, if you want a quartile, quartile tells you percentage, right? What is a quartile? A quartile is a percentile. So if I want Q1, which I'll do, I'll be down here, Q1, Q3. But if I want Q1, that is the 25th percentile. That means I know the percentage. I know I want the 25th percentage. That means I know the area. Then I use inverse norm. But if, if I'm asked for, like, the what is probability? What is it? That's what I want. 
I don't know what the probability is. I want the probability. So I use normal speed. Yeah. yeah. So you see the difference. So I'll do, I'll do, you know, some of the quartile stuff down there, but that's, that's the gist. That's the idea. So um, do I know the area? Do I want it? So you can either be asked for probability or you could be told probability or uh, percentage indirectly. Okay, so remember, know the difference between the two situations. Um, which one are they saying? Do you know it? Do you want it? What is probability? What is the area? So in this case, because I want, I want area, I don't know the area, I want it. This one I go normal CDF. Okay, now I'm going to write this uh, first and then I'll show you on the calculator. Now my lower bound, so this is where I'm bounding it, right? Um, where is it? Lower, upper. And then we'll talk about mean and standard deviation. So um, I'm bounding my area. What's the lower portion of the shaded region? Well, the lower portion of the shaded region is 10.4. The upper portion of the shaded region, I'm going all the way in the right tail, is like infinity. So you can use a large positive number, or we've been using 1E99 if you guys are using that. Then we tell it the mean and the standard deviation. So this is where I'm going to say this is going to match this. Whatever distribution you're on. I'm on this distribution, I put 9.5 and then comma 1.8, okay? So <clears throat> a lot of what I just did did not vary from last week. Basically, it's the same exact thing. The only thing that I have to consider that is extra is which distribution I'm on. It's just going to change this last part, okay? So um, I'm going to show it on, let me start with, I guess, the... I'm going to do both. Uh, I'll show it on the. Can you guys see? Is this too small? Are my calculators too small when I share it that way? It's okay if it is. I could do them separate. I'll do it separate. How many of you guys have the physical calculator? Do most of you have the app? Because if you most have the app, most of you have the app. I have the calculator. All right, cool. Let's go calculator first, right? This is my TI-84, whatever. I want the area. I go normal CDF, right? So second bars is where normal CDF is. My lower bound was 10.4. My upper bound was, and one E was like positive infinity. So we have one, we use the EE on top of the comma. And this is very much the same as the app, 99. My mean was 9.5. If I have to go back to the other screen, let me know. My standard deviation was 1.8. This is all taken from, uh, I wish I could switch sharing very easily, but taken from here, right? Normal CDF, lower, upper, mean, standard deviation, and then pace. So I got, Approximately. I got, got the wrong answer. How do you know? Do you know the answer? Yeah. Well, let's see. Hold on. I got approximately, if I'm running to four decimal places, 0 0.3085. Now, you have your app. So let me show you on the app. I know a lot of people do have the app. I did it the same and I put it under normal CDF. I have a different problem than you, so my numbers are different. But still, I did the same format. It's in what? I did exactly the same format. Mm -hmm. Well, on here we use 10,000 instead of that E99. Use bigger than that because you're not on a standard normal distribution curve. So check so check it out. I'm going to do second bars. Uh -huh. You're number two, right? Normal CDF. Lower bound in this case was 10.4. Upper bound, use a larger. Go ahead and use, uh, I'm going to show you actually if I use 10,000 is not enough because we're not on a standard normal distribution. You need a big positive number. And then my mean was 9.5 and my standard deviation was 1.8. <clears throat> so, I mean, I get the same thing, approximately 3. Uh, 0.3085. I'm going to show you that if I don't use a large enough positive number, that I may get something different just based on the fact that 10,000 is not enough. Um, 9.5 and then 1.8.
because we're not, if it were a standard normal distribution curve, all right, well, this one actually is very close, but um, it depends on the mean and the standard deviation of your normally distributed situation. If my mean was 10,000, 10,000 10, would not be large enough to represent positive infinity. So it all depends. 100,000 and it gave me the same or 100, yeah, and it gave me the same number, which is wrong. I don't, I'm not sure why, but. Well, if you could screenshot it and put it in the chat, then we can look at it and see. Okay. So, um, I mean, look, they could change, they could change obviously the mean and standard deviation up here. They could change your sample size. They can change this. It could say more than, it could say less than. Um, and then this value could change. So, it, you know, you want to be able to decide, you know, which area you're at, which distribution you're on. Um, make sure that you're, you're following what numbers you have in your problem for all the, all of the numbers. Um, this one is different though, number four. Number four is different. So yeah, if you could put that in the chat, screenshot or something, um, or share it, tell me what your problem is, then we could talk about maybe why or what the error is, okay? This one, um, so uh, any other questions so far? I mean, the first part is basically the same as last week, right? Um, one of the, the one that is asking for average. Okay, we're gonna do number four now. So <clears throat> what's gonna change, all right? Now I told you that it is important to not only determine, right, what we knew last week, do we want area or do we know area? Like, am I using normal CDF or am I using inverse norm? That is the same as last week, but now I have to consider which distribution I'm on as well. So there's something extra to think about past what we did last week. And that's what this is. So <clears throat> color coordinating. I'm doing my fancy lime green because now it says for the 38 cities. Look at how this says, what is the uh, probability that one randomly selected city's waterway? This one is saying now I'm using the sample size. Now I'm talking about the 38 cities. From that, find the probability. So this is telling me that I'm on, from here, this is telling me that I'm on either this distribution of the means, I don't know yet, or the distribution of the sums because I'm selecting more than one. I have to decide which one it is. So this and this is the other part that I'm looking at. For the 38 cities, find the probability that the average amount of pollutants, so for a sample size, I'm talking about their average. Okay, so I'm on the distribution of the means or the averages. I'm selecting a sample and I wanna know something about their average. This is this distribution. So now I'm on, I'll just do the star. Now I'm on this one. Between this and this, I'm gonna, these two things are telling me that I'm on this distribution, which I did here, and I already calculated the values. 9.5, and then look, this change. I'm gonna take the one with a lot of digits, 291999, okay? So now this is changing. The end of whatever I'm using, normal CDF or inverse norm is changing because I'm on this distribution of the means because I'm selecting a sample and I want something about their average. Probability tells me I want area again. And the center of this curve it's still the mean, whatever the mean is of your distribution. And this is still 10.4, not a you know, mean difference, more than, still area to the right, but I'm on a distribution. Uh, I'm on a different distribution, I'm on a distribution of the means. So I'm still using normal CDF because I want area, right? My lower bound is still 10.4. My upper bound is still either 1E99 e or a large positive number. Um, let me move this over my next space. But my mean, my mean and my standard deviation is now coming from whatever distribution I'm on. 
but this particular case is 9.5 and then 0 0.291999 in that space. Okay, this part is matching this part. You see what changed? Not a lot has changed from last week, but one thing has changed. So, <clears throat> tell me if that makes sense. So now let me go to my calculator. Side by side. Can I do? Will it let me do this? No, it's not. Oh, I can. Hmm. I'm gonna have to play with this presenting. All right, so, <laughs> um, so second bars, normal CVF. My lower bound was 10.4. My upper bound is still a positive large number. My mean was 9.5 still, but my standard deviation changed. Uh, 0 0.29199. And so my area is going to be a little bit different because it's on a different distribution. Approximately. 0 0.0010, rounding to four uh, digits. To figure out how to just jump back and forth, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, let me. What if, if the average says um, the amount is less, less than? Then you're just doing um, area to the left. Then it would just be, you know, a large negative number and then 10.4. You're always bounding the area, lower and upper. So if it's less than, then your lower bound is like negative 1E99 and then your upper bound is 10.4. You're always determining, you know, lower and upper. What are the two values that are like bounding your area, your shaded region? So you're still using normal CDF, it's just that the lower and upper bound is gonna change. If you're on your, your Calc 84 app thing, so second bars, oops, not that one, second bars, number two, normal CDF, my lower bound. This is what would change if you're doing area to the left. Lower bound would be that one. This is area to the left. The one, negative one, E99, right? You see what I'm saying? No, so the lower bound is the, the large number. Okay, the 10,000. 10,000 was working, so it's the 10,000 number, correct? If you're doing area to the left, um, she was asking about if it said less than. Nine nine two is working. I use nine nine and it's worked too. Yeah, yeah. Either one is gonna work. Um, the only reason that I say you know with the ten thousand might be small, too small is only dependent on your mean and standard deviation. If you have a large mean and standard deviation, ten thousand is not gonna be big enough. You would have to use a bigger one. Okay. That's the only that's the only thing about that. But the E, the one E ninety nine, the negative one, that should always work because that's a huge, huge positive or negative number. I used to do um honestly, I used to do like like just a one with a bunch of zeros and just <laughs> and then keep it moving from there. But it doesn't it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? The idea yeah. is that yeah, the idea is that it's either a large positive number or a large negative number, depending on, um, oops, depending on, what I do, depending on the, um, where the area is, either to the left or to the right. So if the area is to the left, then you're just doing a large negative number to, to basically bound it on the left. Why am I, yo, obviously multitasking is not working this morning. <laughs> 10.4 and then let's do one e99 for my positive and then what i say 9.5 and then 0.291 okay so 0 0.0010 approximately rounded to four digits to the right of the decimal so you can see the difference right this one was the problem when we did the area to the right or more than when we were on a basic, we were selecting one. 
So the standard deviation was um, 1.8 from the population. And then this one is when we were doing the situation where we selected a sample and we talked about the distribution of the averages. So the mean of the averages was the same as the mean of the population, and that didn't change. Uh, look at my formula, but this changed, which changed my probability along a different distribution. <clears throat> Tell me if if that is making sense so far. I didn't finish the problem yet. I still have more to do. <laughs> but is it making sense? Very cool. So let me, I think I have a couple more parts of the problem. And then, <clears throat> so these little pieces here for part D, uh, this was part D, obviously. The part four, I should say, is the assumption that the distribution is normal necessary? Is the assumption that it's normal necessary? Well, that's basically asking me about these. And it's not necessary. Um, first of all, they tell me it's normally distributed. And the sample size is greater than 38. So the answer to that is no. My central limit theorem is cool. I don't have to assume normal normality. No. Okay, they tell me it's normally distributed. My sample is greater than 38. I'm cool. This is the last part of this. This is what um, Mary, I think it was Mary that was talking about this part. Or Heather? Elizabeth. All right. See you, Elizabeth. Um, <clears throat> find the IQR. So IQR is interquartile range, and I, an interquartile range is basically Q3 minus Q1, which is why they asked me for Q1, and that's why they asked me for Q3, and then I can get the interquartile range from there, right? Um, let me give myself some space. I'll probably, I don't like that that number's coming up, but. I'll, pro I'll change it through your notes. I'll probably do them down here because I'll probably draw the curves. Now, again, it is important to know which distribution you are on. So, can you guys guess which distribution I'm on? I can determine... Inverse norm. Yeah, I'm going to use inverse norm. And... I'm on this distribution. How do I know I'm on this distribution where I would use these? How do I know I'm going to use it like this? How do I know I'm using this? Is it because he's because they're asking for the average? Yeah. Yeah. Find the IQR for the average of this, the, the sample. So now I'm on the lime green you paste back here on this, right? this little distribution, okay? And that's important because that's that's changing now for every question. So you have to think about that before you do anything else. But I'm finding the IQR for the average of the 38 cities. I'm not finding the IQR for, you know, one randomly selected. I'm finding the IQR for the average of the cities. So I'm on this distribution, which is why I like to write this down first if I don't already have it. They always ask for it first, but if they don't, you can write it down. So this is where I'm at. So now, when I draw my little curve, which I will, I have, I'll draw both of them. Otherwise, crap, it's moving. I'll draw both of them. This one will be my Q1, my first quartile. This one will be my Q3, my Q3, third quartile. <clears throat> both of them are on the same distribution. So the center is still the mean. And this is where um, Q1 is the 25th percentile, so that separates the 25th, 25 percent of the data values to the left. <clears throat> so this is going to be over here in the left tail. 25 percent, and every time I talk about area, I always put the value for the area on the top of my curve, so I don't confuse it with these values on the bottom. This is the value that I want here. I want to know what this value is corresponding to this area. Now I know. Now I know area because they tell me percentile. Percentile is percentage. 
also known as area in this case. And then Q3 is the 75th percentile, which I want this value here, such that 75%. This is the 75th percentile. 75% and to the left. I'm running out of space. 0.75. Now this is cool. This is really nice because of the fact that somebody already said I'm using inverse norm. Now I'm using inverse norm because I know area and I want value. And the nice thing about the, the quartiles is that basically I already know area to the left. 0.25 for this one, 0.75 for this one. And then my mean and standard deviation comes from the distribution that I'm on. 2, 9, 1, 9, 9, 9, right? 9.5, 0 0.29, 1, 9, 9, 9. Okay? So, um, if I'm using, I'll do this one on the regular calculator, and then I'll do this one on the app. So the first one is the 25th percentile. Which I gotta switch screens because I got so many things. On this one, like the physical calculator, second bars, inverse norm. Oh, see? Um, see this this is the TI-84 plus. It doesn't have the option left, right, or center. <clears throat> some of you do and some of you don't. On the physical calculator, uh, I don't know what you have, but 0 0.25, 0 0.25. Mean was 9.5. Standard deviation was 0 0.291999. And then if you guys have the option left, right, center, then you're going to choose left. I have to fix my calculator that I had before, so. Mine has left, and I use left. Yeah, you, you, well, yeah, because that's telling you where the area is. So you're telling the calculator that the area is to the left of the value that you want it to calculate. And which it is because we're talking quartiles. Was that your question? Okay. 9.303 is Q1. And then if you're using the app, I'll do, uh, I'll do the 75th percentile or, you know, my chance to share my whole screen. No, here's the app. If I'm using the app and I wanna do the 75th percentile, Q, Q3, second, bars, inverse norm, which is this you know, number three, and you guys have to know how to input it. For this, you're always inputting area to the left. So if if we were talking about you know area to the right, that's when you would do one minus. But because we already know the area to the left is 0.75, make sure you put the mean and standard deviation. You saw something pop up here. If um if I don't put mean and standard deviation, it's gonna automatically assume standard normal di distribution. I'm not done, okay? I'm not done. I have to tell it that the mean is 9.5 and the standard deviation is 0.291999. Okay. <clears throat> so that's my Q3. So Q1, I have, you guys can check my numbers, 9.303 and my Q3 was 9.5197. Because I'm rounding to four decimals, right, for every single one of these. Yep. So you guys got the same numbers? How do you get um, on the right again if you're using the calculator? I keep coming up with something different. How do you get, what do you mean on the right? How do you go to the right? How do you choose to the right if you don't have that on your calculator? Oh, so let me show you. If you have a situation where, let's say, you want a value and you know area to the right, let's say 0.25, right? Then you do inverse norm. You don't have the option to tell your calculated area to the right. You have to you have to figure out what the area to the left is. What is this? What is this? If total area is one, and this is 0.25, this is one minus 0.25. You could, this is where you do the one minus, and then mean. Is standard deviation. Okay. 
Oh, OK, I was OK. I was putting one minus seven point or one minus seven, uh, point seven five, which I get it. That was not right. <laughs> well, the reason the reason is because the calculator that you have is basically asking for the area to the left automatically. OK, you're telling it always this is the area to the left of the value that I want. So if you do one minus, you're automatically telling it the area um, that, well, you're telling it that that's the value of the area to the left. So if I do one minus 0.75, I'm kind of doing, you kind of did this. It's yeah, it's backwards. Right to this one, because area to the right of this is one minus 0.75. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. I see what I did. Okay, cool. So, um, so wait, so let's find the IQR real fast. This is. OK, good. Jeez. My computer was just like shipping for a second. I think I have too much going on on my computer. All right, um, 9.5197 minus 9.303, right? Because it's Q, uh, Q3 minus Q1, which I don't know what that is. What is that? Nine point five one nine seven minus nine point three zero three and I get point two one six seven. So my IQR for this particular situation, point two one six seven. Okay, so you see how um I forgot who it was, but you see how for you know this one it said what is probability? Find probability. That means I want to know what the area is and therefore I use normal CDF. And this one basically told me um, what is Q1? That's the same thing as saying, you know, what is the value that has 25% below it? This is giving me a percentage, which means I know the percentage, know the area, and I want the value, and that's when I do inverse norm. And then the extra piece of this week is which distribution now am I on? So um, once I determine which distribution I'm on, everything else re is repetitive from last week because it's inverse norm versus you know normal CDF. So let me ask if you guys have questions. Yeah, let me actually stop recording for a second because I'm going to switch.